Don't rage quit on your Apple Pencil, there's a better way. Today I've got nine hacks and tips that will help you navigate that new iPad. Hello, my name is Brad, and today I'm talking about how I get the most out of all my iPads. I'm still recovering from We're in week three now. I'm not sure it's ever gonna end. So I apologize for my voice being a little bit hoarse, but I, I am actually feeling better. I am an aspiring illustrator, so a lot of the tips that I have here are, are really catered to that drawing, design, illustration, that sort of thing. Now, some of the tips here are about taking advantage of some of the less discoverable features on the iPad OS software. Some are just things that make the hardware more convenient to use. For example, iPads that use the original Apple Pencil are a tremendous value, but charging the Apple Pencil itself can be kind of awkward. I worry about accidentally bending the charger at the bottom, or I'm just always misplacing the little adapter that lets me attach it to a cable so I can charge it that way. Now, my daughter uses the Apple Pencil one with her iPad, and she loves this little charging stand. It gives her a place to store her pencil when she's not using it, so that way the pencil itself is not getting misplaced. Also, the pencil is always charged up when she needs it and it even has a place for the little end cap that's another little piece that often goes missing there are several different chargers like this that you could pick up on amazon they all do the pretty much the same thing she probably chose this one because it comes in different colors i'll link it down below in the description if you want to check out this one apple sidecar this lets you turn your ipad into a second screen for your mac now unfortunately it's mac only although there are some third-party apps like Duet Display and AstroPad that let you do the same thing over on Windows. You have to initiate Sidecar from your Mac. Go to the little settings icon in your dock and click on Display. One of the options is to connect to Bradley's iPad. Your iPad might be called something different. I hope it is. This also turns your iPad into a sort of drawing tablet, so you can use the Apple Pencil in your favorite Mac drawing app. It's not perfect. There are some quirks here with hand gestures, like pinching to zoom in is a little funky in Photoshop that sort of thing. But for quick edits or some touch-up work here and there, it works pretty well. I'm always flipping between apps. I don't know if I call this a drawback of the iPad, but unlike working on the desktop, you have to use one app to do one thing and another app to use another. So switching between those apps is a pretty common thing to do. Swipe up from the bottom of your screen and it'll show you all of the recent apps that you have used. But if I'm just bouncing between say two apps at any given time, I can quickly swipe left or right on the bottom of the screen to quickly flip between them. The iPad also lets you have two apps open at once. I love to follow along with video tutorials on YouTube while I'm drawing. So I can swipe up from the bottom, uh, bring up my dock, and then drag the icon that of the app that I want in that side screen. You could also grab that center point and drag it to how much of the screen you want to take up. Now you can't make it any size you want. It does snap to either like a quarter of the screen or half the screen or three fourths of the screen, but it does let you multitask. If you've ever followed an online art tutorial or course and thought this just isn't turning out right, it's not you. When I started teaching myself art a few years back, I found that I needed an elementary school class, maybe a middle school or a high school class before I could jump into some of those amazing college level classes that I was finding online. My new intro to digital art course is designed to be that stepping stone for people who are just getting started in digital art. Each project in my course is designed to give you a quick win, something that you can build on, just some fundamentals. So you can take those and go back to those tougher courses and really kick some butt. Check out the links below in the description to learn more. And thanks to everybody who's picked it up so far. It's a great way to support this channel. I use a lot of reference images. I can take any image in the Photos app, pinch with three fingers to copy it, and then paste it into whatever app I'm drawing in. The Apple Pencil 2 has a tappable area. Now, double tapping right here works kind of like a button press. In a lot of drawing apps, the default action is that it changes the tool you're on over to an eraser. Now, many apps let you go in and customize specifically how that works, or you can go into the main settings for the Apple Pencil and play with those things yourself. Like I mentioned, you can toggle it off altogether, but you could also change it to some other basic things here as well. Now, handwriting recognition with the Apple Pencil is surprisingly 
shockingly good. Like, shockingly good. Drawing a line through text allows you to select it. Scribbling through text just deletes it. And this is not just for notes. A, a lot of apps have incorporated this functionality in little ways, so you don't have to shift between using the Apple Pencil and then shifting over to the keyboard. I use a screen protector on my iPad and I really like the feel of an Apple Pencil on a textured surface instead of just the plain glass screen. Now there are a ton of screen protectors out there now. I use Paperlike on mine because they sent me a bunch of free ones a few years back when I did a promo for them. I have used a couple others. There are some differences. Now, one thing I should point out is any screen protector that you put on your iPad is going to dull the colors a little bit. Some are grainier. Some have like a, a rainbow effect when you shift the screen around a little bit. They just refract light just in a little weird way. So that's something you should be aware of if you're going for that, like that pixel perfect screen quality. Screen protector might not be for you, but I'm more than happy to make that trade off to get that really nice, crisp drawing feel and control using the Apple Pencil. Now, one thing I've seen a lot of people talk about are these little rubbery pencil tips that give your Apple Pencil some drag to them while you're drawing. And I have used some of them and they do improve the feel, uh, but I don't like them quite as much as a screen protector. Rubber on glass isn't quite as natural as just a more textured screen. Also, these tips seem to create a little bit of line wobble. And that's something that does get in the way when I'm trying to create really crisp line work. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but that might be another thing to look out for if you're trying to decide between the pen tips and a screen protector. I use search a lot, and just by swiping down on the home screen, it brings up this little search box. Mainly I use it to find apps. I have a lot of apps on my iPad and I always forget where I put them, but I could also wait for it search the entire internet. It's also integrated with Siri, so it brings up things like if you type in a movie name or a TV show name, it'll bring that up. It even acts as a calculator if you give it some math problems. The Files app. Now this thing has come a long way in recent years when the iPad Pro first came out. That was one of the things really holding this back was just file management. But nowadays, it's pretty darn good. I rely pretty heavily on cloud storage when I'm using my iPad. I like to share my files in between my my laptop and my iPad. So iCloud is there by default, but if you use something like Dropbox or Google Drive, you're, need, you're going to need to install those apps from the App Store first before you can use those as part of the Files app. Now, once installed, you can tap on these three little dots here on the top of the sidebar and choose Edit Sidebar. That's gonna bring up a bunch of options and it can show you all the different services that you can toggle on that will be there by default. Another thing you could do is if you have uh, folders on your iPad itself and you want quick access to them, you can just drag that folder over to the sidebar and now it's included over there. Another thing I like to use is the document scanner. If you go back to that three dot menu, I could just use this to grab some of my sketches and bring them into the files app and open them into whatever program I need to. I used to use the iPad to just snap photos and get that stuff, but I find that the scanner works a little better because it crops out all of the other stuff around it and it's just much cleaner. I also take a lot of screenshots for reference. Now with the Apple Pencil, I could just swipe up from the bottom left corner of the screen and boom, instant screenshot that I can save or copy to my clipboard. Now I've seen these advertised around. I, I don't know exactly what to call them. They're like these iPad holding boards. And I've always looked at them and thought, okay, I get it. Not something that I would necessarily use, but cool. Astropad sent me their version called Darkboard to test out last year. And yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. The iPad clicks in it. There's room for the pencil to charge. It's, it's very light, it's ergonomic. It's very, very easy to hold. And then my daughter tried it. She just, loves this thing. I mean, absolutely loves it. She draws a lot while sitting on a couch. Uh, I draw, I tend to draw more when I'm sitting at my desk. And so she finds this to be incredibly comfortable. It is really easy for her to hold and she, her neck doesn't get sore. So if you're having problems while using an iPad, like ergonomic problems, checking out something like this might be totally worth it. All right, so, so those are my tips for noobs. What would you add to this list? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.